Hello fellow tankers, this is Dauntless, and today we're going to be looking at the top 5 ways you can increase your win rate. Now please bear in mind that this is a personal list, and you may or may not agree with the order of these, or you know how important any of these are in increasing your win rate, but I personally have found that these do have an impact on making my win rate go up, and hopefully they help you out as well. Starting things off at number 5, we have playing vehicles that you're good at playing or playing vehicles at your skill level. I have seen so many players that have no idea what they're doing in a vehicle, play it very poorly, and end up just destroying their win rate because of it. No matter how shiny and how great that new tier 10 heavy tank might look, if you think that it's a light tank and get yourself killed in the first 30 seconds, you're going to be a huge hindrance on your team. And not only that, you're going to wreck your stats. So next time... Maybe pick a vehicle that you're comfortable with playing and maybe at a lower tier level. Playing tier 10, if you're not very good at the game yet, is just going to be a hard, hard learning curve. Whereas playing at tier 5 might be more beneficial for improving your stats. I would look at your own stats, um, looking at your service record, look at the vehicles, filter it by win rate, play the vehicles that you're the best at playing, look at the class, look at the type, look at the nation, and just focus in on those vehicles and play those lines and you should see your gameplay improving drastically as well as your win rate. Moving on to number four, making your shots count. If you aren't connecting your shots or if you're not penetrating your shots, you're not going to be doing enough damage to the point where your enemies are going to either be holding you up or they're going to be actually trading more effectively and doing more damage to you than you are to them. Either of these situations cause games where you're not going to be playing as effectively as you could be and making your win rate go down. Now, the ways you can accommodate for this is definitely, number one, knowing your enemy's weak spots, whether it be the lower plate or the cupola, there are many ways you can take advantage of the enemy. So studying enemy armor layout is very, very important. But the other part, which, you know, this is controversial, but is shooting gold rounds, as you can see doing here. If you can penetrate by shooting gold, whereas you wouldn't be able to before, this is going to definitely give you an edge, and it's going to let you win more games. Whereas if you were to shoot normal rounds, you're not going to be able to penetrate as much, and you will be losing more. Again, I don't necessarily agree with this, but this is something that is in the game, and if you do use gold rounds, you are going to be able to win more games. Number three on my list is playing the best form of your tank as possible. This means not running stock like this ARL44 is here, but making sure that whenever you go into a game, your vehicle is elited, you have a good crew, and you also are running consumables and equipment, because this will give you the most advantage over your enemy, and if you go into a game stock with a 50% crew, you're going to be a hindrance to yourself and to your team, and ultimately you're going to be winning a lot less games by doing so. This means you should be saving your free experience and using it to elite your tanks or at least getting the better modules for it, such as a gun and an engine, early on before you hop into a game, making sure that you're transferring your crews over from previous vehicles so that you're running 100% crew with crew skills, because if you go into a game with a 50% crew, you're really going to have a hard time carrying. And also, you're going to be wanting just basic equipment, such as a gun laying drive, you're going to want to have optics, and then a gun rammer, and you're going to want to have those transferred over to every tank that you play if you can afford to, and if you're not planning on keeping those previous vehicles, because this will give you that advantage that you wouldn't have had if you played completely stock. This should give you much more of an advantage, because again, for those of you that have played a 50% crew tank with completely stock, uh, modules is just super painful to do and I highly do not recommend doing this and so again for those of you that want to have a higher win rate you know it's gonna cost you a little bit more gold a little bit more credits but I would highly recommend making sure that your tank is in tip-top shape before you go into a battle because this will have the biggest impact on your win rate in my personal opinion Alright, so number two on my list, and I feel like this one does get overlooked even though it is kind of obvious, is teamwork. Now, one way you might take this is, hey, communicate with your team when you're playing pubs and tell them what you're going to be doing. And yes, while this is important, I feel like it's not very effective because a lot of people in pubs don't really listen to what you're going to be doing and everyone's kind of there for themselves. And this is where my point is to 
find a couple friends that you like to play with and just platoon with them. Get team speak, grab some microphones, and communicate with each other in real time while you're brawling it out. Come up with tactics. Tell them exactly what you're going to be doing, such as, hey, I'm going to spot this guy Will you get ready to shoot. will give you such an advantage, even over the most skilled players, because having that insight that they don't have and coming up with tactics not only improves your gameplay, but is also a lot of fun. I would avoid playing with people that you know, are toxic or that are raging a lot while you're playing because this can have a negative impact on your game because when you're not having fun and you're getting frustrated, you will be you will be playing worse. And so, you know, grab a couple buddies that you're really familiar with, that you play well together with, and over the years you guys will become better and better together. And ultimately this is how I became as good as I am now by playing with my brother and a couple of my close friends. Because when you're in a situation and when you're kind of alone, Having a team member to just have your back and be there for you is the best feeling in the world. And for the number one spot on my list, the last but certainly not the least, is maximizing your DPM and keeping your gun in the game. Now this is definitely easier said than done and I'm guilty of not doing this very effectively at times as well. But realistically, it means keeping your gun firing without dying, trading effectively and staying in the action. Because if you're one of those players that find themselves sitting in the back of the match the entire time and just kind of shooting at the very end, you're doing something wrong. And if you're one of those players that just gets way too aggressive because they want to be in the battle and find themselves in the garage within the first three minutes of every battle, again, you're doing something wrong. And so you want to have that fine mix of the halfway point, right? Where you're kind of playing defensively, but you're also playing to the point where you're aggressive enough and you're keeping your gun firing. If you can't find this balance, you're not going to be able to be very effective at this game. Right here is a good example. We traded poorly. They got a shot in to us, we took damage, we did not take any of their health. And making poor trades like this is ultimately going to lose you more games. And so you want to make sure that you're trading more damage for your HP because realistically at the end of the game, you want to be the last one standing on your team and you also want to have more HP and damage done than your vehicle. <laughs> realistically, you want to have more than your HP because if you break even at 1500 damage, let's say for the Conway, that's how much HP the Conway has, this means that you had a net neutral impact on the game. Whereas if you did more than your HP and damage, you're going to have a positive impact on the game, meaning you should technically be winning more games at 50%. But a lot of players will have 500 damage in their top tier heavy tanks, and if you're doing this consistently, you're not going to be winning very many games. And so if your tank has great turret armor, let's say, and has great gun depression, utilize that. Use that as an advantage. Haul down the best you can. Or if your tank has Hesh ammo like the Conway, load it when you know you're going up against a Scorpion and do that 800 damage of alpha damage when you can. And so really, if you know your vehicles well enough and you know your strengths, Get into the fight, but try to stay alive as long as possible. And if you can do this, you should see your win rate go up. And the last little bit of bonus advice is go for kill shots. If you have the option of taking out an enemy vehicle that's on full life, or not taking out, I should say, if you have a chance of firing at a vehicle that has full life or a vehicle that is a one-shot kill, definitely go for that one-shot kill because taking that gun out of the game is going to force him or her not to utilize and maximize their DPM because they're going to be out of the game, right? And so by canceling out other people's potential maximum damage, you increase your odds of winning because you're allowing yourself to maximize yours. I know that sounds really complicated. It really isn't. Basically, don't die and do as much damage as possible. Anyway, guys, hopefully you liked this video. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you get a like down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for more content like this in the future. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.